I am such an advocate for buying authentic pieces. Very interestingly, the pieces that I'm comparing today has a very obvious flaw from the get-go. And it's like, how can you try to make 100% copy but couldn't even make it right from the beginning? Hi guys, welcome back. I know a lot of you guys love the comparison videos on the channel. Most of you really liked the real versus fake videos. Today, I am bringing you another episode of the real versus fake on Cartier jewelry. I am such an advocate for buying authentic pieces. Very interestingly, the pieces that I'm comparing today has a very obvious flaw from the get-go. And it's like, how can you try to make 100% copy but couldn't even make it right from the beginning? The faults and the flaws doesn't stop from there. We're going to be taking a really deep dive into the two different pieces. One is worth probably less than 100 US dollar and the other one is an authentic piece from Cartier. It's priced at $4,500. Currently, I know I'm holding a real one and a fake one and can you guys tell which one is real, which one is not? We are going to be making this a very fun comparison video for you guys and if you're new to the channel, my name's Vivian. I'm the host for my first luxury. I welcome you to watch all of the other series that I did on some of the very iconic products from Chanel's classic flaps to Cartier jewelry to Van Cleef jewelry because I've gotten so many questions around them I wanted to make it into a visual experience for you guys and once again I am here not promoting anybody to buy unlawful copy stuff. It is illegal to do so so if you tell me there's no difference you can see I don't know what to say to that. However, for those who are interested in purchasing some of your jewelry pieces from secondary market without knowing the seller very well, this is the video for you as I wanted to share as much knowledge and also visuals for you to recognize what is authentic and genuine and what is not. So without further ado, let's take a deeper look at the small size just on clue with diamonds today. So here are the two pieces and let's start from the left one to the right one. I'm giving you a quick preview to see if you guys can pick up anything from these footage. And let's take a look at the physical appearance of these two. The left one appears to be a little bit more of that in-between shade of a yellow gold and a rose gold, while the one on the right looks more rosy. The curve of both bracelets looks similar, even though to me the one on the right looks a little bit more stretched compared to the left where it looks more round. And I'm going to show you guys differences in different angles. Like this one is the top view, and you can see the color difference if you're really looking into it. This shot probably shows more difference if you look at it. Colors are different on both of these. The one on the right looks a little bit more like a 14 karat rose gold tone to me versus the left looks a little bit more yellow goldish. So here are some interesting things. Even though both of them are laying flat, the direction of the nail heads are facing different ways. The one on the left is facing left. You can see that if I were to turn it over, that's when it faces the same direction. So basically, I'm trying to show you guys here that they're facing opposite of each other. Which, don't you guys think it's a little bit odd? Do you have any guesses now? If you don't know what I'm talking about, here's another view of them together. This is the left on top of the right. You can tell that the end of the nail are pointing different directions and in some shots you can pick up the color difference much more. Now let's inspect some of the details and let's start with the left one and this is the diamond setting on the left one where you can see diamonds pretty much set all around this nail head and only the very end of it where it touches the bottom is missing two diamonds or maybe just one. It pretty much is set all the way around besides the bottom which is a brilliant design because why would you put a stone there and have it scratched? And here comes the one on the right. Let's see how many stones are set around this nail head. It is still going, so it looks like it's all the way around, including the area that is touching the bottom of the bracelet. Let's have a closer inspection at these pieces because you guys know that I think luxury is all about details. You can see that it's an even bendable piece of gold over here and it's symmetrical, everything is aligned. You don't really see anything that's odd coming out of it. 
However, when you see this piece over here in certain angle, you can see that there is extra something peeking out from the back. And now that I've turned it to the back, you can see that the end of the nail looks like it's a little hook. So if I were to put them right next to each other, you can see that this is more smooth and this one just seems a little bit odd because the end of it is not going towards the same direction. I can also see from here the end of the nail are designed differently. The one has more of a flat end, the one on the right is more pointy. Now let's look at the front side of the business. You can see there are five of the same screw impressions on both pieces, but the left one looks a lot more sharper than the right. Next, I'm going to describe some on-hand feels to you guys. You can hear that whenever I close these pieces, it just touches each other perfectly and then it makes the sound and it feels robust on the hand and it doesn't feel like it's flimsy or anything and you can see when it closes there's absolutely no gap and close up perfectly next is a very brief sound test and honestly it hurt me when I was slapping it and now let's compare it to the one on the right I'm gonna do the slap test first I'm not sure if you can hear, but it actually felt really loose when I was laying around with it. And you can see as a brand new piece, it already opened up. And you can see an obvious gap between the top and the bottom. And here comes an exclusive sound check for you guys. One on the left first, and one on the right. And if you pay attention, you can hear the sound difference, but I'm gonna change it up and try dropping it on a harder surface. Here's your turn. I'm gonna pop quiz you guys and see if you can hear the difference between the two. There's no particular order. All right, let me know in the comment section below which one you think is right, which one is left. Next, let's go in on these details of the screw impressions of both bracelets. This is the one on the left. You can see the sharp edges. You can clearly see the crisp and sharp edges from both top and bottom. And this is the one on the right. You can see the impressions are a little bit shallow, even though there are five matching as well. But let's now take a look at it from a different angle to show you the real difference. So this is the top view of the right one that we're looking at. You can see the impressions are a little bit shallow and you almost have to find it versus the one on the left. You can see it right away. They are even crisp and also aligned both top to bottom. Up next, let's take a look at the stones. Let's start with the one on the right, and you can see there are stones that is being set in there, but the stone doesn't look very sparkly. And then this is one on the left. You can see clearly the stones are set more properly and they all have inclusions like it's a real deal. And also the edges look uniformed as well. Speaking of edges, let's zoom in on those details as well, shall we? So now you have a clearer visual. You can see the one on the left is sharper. The one on the right is almost round. It's pretty much a sharp versus round situation over here. And I'm gonna zoom in on those details for you. You can see that on the inside of the sharp plate, there are like almost these um, textures where it holds the piece better versus on the right where there's nothing in there. It looks like it's just two pieces of material that smash together to hold the stone. And you can see the color difference between the stone. This one has that gray, dark bluish appearance versus the one on the left. It's clearer. It has more of a diamond-like texture. And next, let's take a look at the diameter of the nail heads because it's one of the dominant features on this piece. And you can see that the left is the perfect round versus the right, where it appears to be the perfect round, but if you look at it, it's not perfect round. So there is that difference. I don't know if you can see on the left edge of the right piece, there is a little bit pointy situation going on. Now let's go by order and move on to the tip of the nails because you might think they look similar from afar, but if we take a closer look the difference is actually pretty big so let's see if you can find any differences between the two 
First of all is the one on the left, which it does have more of a clearer edge versus the one on the right. It also looks like it's got two stones and the similar look to the left, but the details are actually different. First of all is the stone. You can see the clarity between the two pieces are very different. The one on the left has more of that diamond sparkle and the one on the right, even if you don't know what diamond looks like, you know these clearly are not like diamonds. And also the edges where the stones are casted in look very different. The one that you're looking at right now looks very rough. And then I think there's a little bit of a hole on top of the bigger stone as well. And the settings are kind of a copy of the left, but not exactly. And now going back to the left side, you can see that clearly there is a difference between the two. The lines, the corners, the edges are clearer and the one on the right is just a lot rougher. Also, I got this piece brand new, but look at all of the wear on it already um, compared to the one on the left, which is also slightly worn and tried on, but since it's gold, there's nothing on there, which is beautiful. And now let's take it to the next level and give you some micro shots of these pieces because the one on the right is just horrific to look at. If you zoom in on it to the next level, you can see that the corners are poorly cut and things are just kind of, you know, shuffled in there, the setting, the cast, and also a couple of holes in there, which makes me think maybe these two parts are connected. I'm not too sure how it's constructed but just briefly comparing it on the same skill to the right side, you can see that there are definitely a lot more details and it's finished a lot nicer than the right one. And these are the reasons why I appreciate luxury more. So at this point, you probably know I'm kind of giving you away which one is real, which one is not. But honestly, if you just see the visual differences between the two, I'm pretty sure if you love nicer things, you could appreciate one over another already. I'm going to show you guys these two details again because to me it's very obvious. This is the one on the right because you can see this is the front of the nail tip and it's very rough versus the right. Even if you don't know what rough and clear the differences are, you can see it here very, very, very well. Moving on to the information bar because you guys know I like to show you guys these as well. And this is the one on the right, which you can see that it's already upside down. And I'm not sure why it's constructed this way, even though it's meant to be like a copy. But you can see the engravings of all the information on there looks really, really rough without me zooming in. But here's a close up shot. The informations are there, but if you compare it to the one on the left, you can clearly see that these are a better version of an engraving and also it's very legible and it's clear and you have all the informations on there now going back to the one on the right it's pretty much the opposite of the one that I just showed you isn't it it does have all the information in the order for you it does have the branding the size of the bracelet the try to be serial number and also the gold stamp as well as the manufacturer hallmark and let me just pull the left one over because you can see that the manufacturer hallmark is PGI even though there are different ones but I've never seen the one that's been stamped on the right one before all right, now let's look at things on the macro scale because I feel like, you know, the appearance is very important, especially for Cartier bracelets. They fit very comfortably on your wrist when you pick the right size. And the reason why I have it stopped on this screen is so that you can see and stare at it for five seconds and you'll see the differences between the shapes of these two. The one on the left is more of that round oval in between shape and it's like a little bit more stretched to the top versus the one on the right it has more of an eggy shape which majority of our wrist actually all of our wrists are in the shape of that so when it sits on your wrist it doesn't really cut or get in the way so that is really the design and i hope you can see the differences between the two shapes and lastly, welcome to the infamous My First Luxury Weighing Program. And this is the first piece we're weighing and you can hear that it is pretty solid. So it's a one on the left and it weighs about nine grams on a foot scale. Just keep in mind, I only have a foot scale, but it comes in grams, so it kind of is relatable. And you hear the one on the right and when you place it on there, it's four grams. And keep it in mind, the real piece is actually made of gold. 
So it's very obvious, right? And there's really no compromise when you spend that kind of money besides buying from a brand. The brand also brings a lot of value when you decide to let go of the piece later on. So to me, it's a no-brainer that everybody should be investing this kind of money into luxury brands. You get the experience. You also will enjoy it very much when you wear these pieces. And most importantly, when you decided to let go, the value of these pieces tend to stay really well, especially jewelry brands like Cartier or Van Cleef. So I really hope you find this video helpful. If you would like to watch more of real versus fakes on the channel, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up to let me know and also really supports the channel. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I can't wait to see you guys on the next one. Take care guys. Bye.